Is genetics the reason why it's so much easier for some people to keep a healthy weight than others? That is a fantastic question and one that we are going to have a look at today. Uh, hello, this is Why Weight and my name is Deanna Bedoya and for years I have taught thousands of university students about their bodies and how to appreciate and love their bodies and understand them better so they can take better care of them and I would love to extend that same knowledge to you and that is ideally why you're here today. By the end of today's video, I want you to have a really decent understanding of some of the evidence behind the linkage between obesity and genetics. And I'm gonna do that by focusing on three different types of studies. Twin studies, studies in mice, and something called genome-wide association studies that look at the genetic data of people from around the world. Please stay tuned to the end of the video because it's really important that you put all of this information together with a higher message as well so stay tuned for that too so as far as our study of obesity and genetics a lot of our study has focused on something called twin studies which are exactly what they sound like we have looked at monozygotic or identical twins throughout the years and seen if they are more likely to have the same body weight compared to twins that are dizygotic or what we would call fraternal twins so to remember, monozygotic twins, identical twins, have the exact same genes. So if obesity was genetically determined or influenced, we would expect identical twins to more likely have the same BMI or regular or weight compared to our dizygotic or fraternal twins. Now, is that true? In fact, it is. Identical twins are much, much more likely to have a, a similar BMI um, compared to those fraternal twins. So those are twin studies. Those are some of the original studies with respect to genetics and obesity. Uh, but a lot of our other studies about genetics and obesity come from mice. And I know mice aren't human, and we uh, have to always keep that in mind, but we can you know, do some things with mice or understand um, humans through studying mice in very interesting ways. So for instance, they had these litters of mice that, that they were breeding and they found that all of a sudden there was this mouse that was very obese, like three times the size of his litter mates. And not only was he very obese, he also um, ate about three times as much as his, uh, again, brothers and sisters. And what they later found is that this mouse that they called the OB mouse or obese mouse, uh, had a deficiency for a really important uh, fullness factor called leptin. So this is an example of a single genetic change increasing the risk of obesity significantly. Is that the same in humans? Not really. There are humans that have obesity or other conditions due to one genetic change, but that is very, very, very rare. So for instance, um, that same genetic mutation we just talked about, leptin deficiency, not having that OB gene working properly, um, that does exist in humans, but like there's been like no cases of it. There's been very, 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 very few cases of it, like less than 0.1% um, of people have this genetic mutation. So it's very rare, and that's just one example, but it's very rare for an individual to have obesity due to one single genetic mutation. And what we've learned th through a new type of study, something called a genome-wide association study, is that it's not monogenetic obesity that's going on or single gene obesity that's going on, is that individuals with obesity have a lot of changes in their genomes that in some way, and we're still trying to figure it out, but in some way add up to uh, lead to you know, differences that could potentially result in obesity. So a lot of this evidence comes from a genome-wide association study called the GIANT study, or the Genome Genomic Investigation of Anthropometric traits. I believe that's what it stands for. And basically what this study is, is they had, they have all this genome data. They have all this, like, I know your genetic makeup. I know your genetic makeup. I know your genetic makeup. I know your genetic makeup because I've studied, I have all this genome uh, data from around the world. 
And what they did is they looked at the genomes of more than 700,000 individuals and they compared the genomes or genetic makeup of people with obesity to individuals that don't have obesity that were leaner and they look to see is there some changes going on in individuals with obesity that we don't see in lean individuals and to date they've found around a hundred different changes in the genome in the genetic makeup that seem to be more evidenced in individuals with obesity than lean individuals now what the heck does that mean how does it actually affect obesity? Quite honestly, <laughs> I say this a lot, but we don't totally understand yet. A lot of those changes that we found in the genome actually are found in places of the, of the genome that we actually don't know what they do, or they seem to be in a region that doesn't do anything, okay? However, they found uh, really 13 different genes that we do know that do something that have been changed or are more likely to be changed in individuals with obesity compared to lean individuals. And what's really interesting about that is that those genetic changes tend to occur, are most likely to occur around genes that are expressed in appetite centers. Remember I did that video on how appetite is regulated and at the beginning of it I talked about how genetics can influence appetite and that seems to be really the case in individuals with obesity. There's some sort of shift in, in the genome that's affecting our ability to sense like fullness factors or maybe to put that stop signal down so we eat less and maybe more likely to have the accelerator down, <laughs> that eat pathway engaged, and that's perhaps why they tend to, to, to eat a lot more. So to summarize, the evidence is actually pretty clear that there is a genetic origin of obesity and that it's not one single gene that's leading to obesity, but probably a combination that's different in everyone of little subtle changes in the genome that's affecting certain things in the body like appetite, like perhaps metabolism, that is going to make it a lot more difficult for some people compared to other people. And that's why we have to keep in mind that genetics do not determine our fate. They, we like to say a lot in this world that genetics loads the gun, as in it makes people more likely to have certain conditions, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to. Of course, we also have free will in the matter as well. So while it is more difficult for some individuals to eat more healthfully or not eat too much, it is of course possible. And that is what this channel is about. It's about figuring out what is going to work for you, accepting that it might be more difficult for some people than others, but then figuring out what is your recipe for helping you gain more control over the things you can control understanding that it is more difficult for some people than other people, but that's just life. Some things in life are easier for some people and more difficult for others, and it's just one of those things we have to accept and we have to roll with. We also like to say the environment pulls the trigger, which means that while we can't control our genetics, we can control our environment and our behaviors. We can control what we keep around us, what temptations we keep around us. We can control the things we do, the foods we eat. And I know that sounds a lot more easier said than done, but um, that again is what this channel is about, is helping you to figure out what is gonna work for you so you feel more control over the things you actually can control. So if you feel that I helped you understand your body better and you wanna keep hearing more about this, uh, subscribe to this channel so I can keep you up to date or like this video so I know this content is going through or give me a comment and let me know what you think or what you perhaps are struggling with yourself because I'd love to help you figure out your body better so you can enjoy your life more. That's what I want for you and that's what I want for me and let's figure that out together. And why wait? Have a fantastic day. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.